Hello friends, welcome back to our series of lectures on ionic equilibrium. In today's session, I wish to take up a very simple concept of pH. You have learnt about pH in your school and also are aware of pH, but we understand that uh, this concept, though being very, very simple, but a lot of uh, small kind of misconceptions people carry about it, which we will want to take up today and clarify. And also, you know that pH is a very common concept, important concept from the chemistry point of view, but it finds applications in wide variety of uh, domains, say in biochemistry, the enzymes work at specific pH, we know that enzymes are very, very specific in nature. They work at specific temperature, specific pH and so on and so forth. In uh, say cosmetics, the pH is very, very important because if a, a given cosmetic doesn't have a pH compatible with your skin, then it can cause you reaction there. It can be very damaging. Going further, uh, even in the pharmaceutical industry, because uh, the pH has a role to play over there. In agriculture, the soil pH is a very crucial parameter for any kind of a crop to be cultivated over there. So you find that pH is very simple concept, a common concept, but finds wide variety of applications over there. So in today's session, what basically I'm going to do is, I will start by uh, introducing uh, the concept of pH, not directly, but via ionic product of water. Because basically we need to first understand what do we mean by ionic product of water, which is denoted as Kw. Having talked about it, we will talk about uh, the pH concept in terms of what is the need for this kind of a concept and what is the logic of the concept there. Having done this, we will move on to uh, see that how pH and pKw are related. We will define pKw also. Once you know kW, then we will define pKw and then we will try to relate the two terms over there. Thereafter, we will come down to uh, a very, very commonly mistaken uh, kind of a aspect of pH uh, that is the pH scale. What is the range of pH 0 to 14, 1 to 14 and variety of questions we will raise and try to answer over there. Then towards that, we will try to relate the pH and temperature. Well, that means how does pH depend on the <coughs> temperature of the system over there. And then lastly, we will try to sum up what we do in today's session. Okay, now let's make a beginning by seeing uh, that, uh, because we mentioned it earlier also, that pure water is practically non-conducting. What does it mean? That means if I take pure distilled water and I try to see does it conduct electricity, we find the answer is no. That is practically speaking, this is very very important, that is practically speaking it is non-conducting. But actually it is conducting, but the conductance of this is very 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 small, very uh, little. So uh, since it is very little, we say it is non-conducting. But fact remains that the conductivity of water is non-zero. It is very small, but it is positive. Okay, so then question comes up is that how do we rationalize the conductivity of water? We know the structure of water. Water is a neutral molecule, but polar because there is a polarity in the molecule over there. But can this molecule carry current? The answer is no. Then the then question is how does it conduct? Then how does it that the water uh, pure water happens to be conducting in nature? To answer this, we try to recall uh, a concept which I learnt earlier that is water happens to be amphoteric. We talked about amphoteric nature when we talked about acids and bases. Amphoteric nature means any substance which can act as an acid as well as a base depending on the situation. Okay, now water is amphoteric that we can see by this equation over here. We find that a motor molecule the two water molecules are acting with each other. One water molecule picks up a proton from the other one and becomes hydronium ion and the one which gives a proton becomes a hydrogen ion there. So this water molecule which has picked up a proton is behaving as a base. The water molecule which has lost a proton is behaving as an acid there. So it is showing amphoteric nature over there. And that is how do we see in terms of uh, structures over there. This is a water molecule, another water molecule there, this proton gets transfer to this one, this becomes hydronium ion and this becomes OH ion over there. I have not shown the charges here. Now, what does it mean? It means that any sample of water, if you take a pure sample of water, that has small concentration of hydronium ion and OH ions. And it is this small concentration which is responsible for the conduction of water. 
uh, whatever limited little amount of conduction water has is just because of this tiny amount of uh, hydronium ions and hydroxide ions over there okay and this process this process by which uh, you get hydronium ions and OH ions is termed as autoprotolysis or earlier we used to call it as auto ionization of water that means water by itself uh, means a water molecule is getting protonated there's a protolysis of water that means one water molecule takes the proton from other one and generates hydronium ions and OH ions in the solution there earlier it was called as auto ionization now it's important to note here uh, when we talked about evaporating nature earlier in say acid cell basis we know that something will be behaving as an acid if the other species in system happens to be a strong base and species will act as a base if the other species happens to be a strong acid but in case of water what you find is that water on its own acts as an evaporating it's a very special kind of a molecule because there are not many molecules which behave this way water is a peculiar molecule there okay let's move further and see that since uh, this reaction that is the autoprotolysis of water happens to be an equilibrium reaction since it's an equilibrium reaction it must be characterized by a equilibrium constant and that we can write as the concentration of hydronium ions into concentration of hydroxide ions divided by concentration of water squared over there we know how to write a equilibrium constant for an equilibrium reaction now now we have to take uh, note of the fact that in water as we have been telling again and again that this uh, reaction autoprotolysis proceeds to the forward direction in a very very tiny amount that means the extent of reaction is very small and in such a case what we see is that the concentration of water molecules will not change suppose i take one uh, decimeter cube or one liter of water that has about 55.55 moles of water out of that 55.55 moles of water only about 10 to minus 7 moles are the ones which are getting ionized so it means it's a really insignificant amount of water which will be getting ionized so what we say is that for all practical purposes the concentration of water does not change okay that is one aspect there so that means this becomes a constant term over there and if we take this constant term to this side that means we rearrange like this that means k equilibrium that is the k equilibrium is the equilibrium constant for the autoprotolysis water okay autoprotonation reaction of water to this if you multiply by this constant again this is a concentration of hydrogen, hydrogen uh, concentration of water squared over there so this becomes a new constant we call it as kw we denote it as kw and call it as ionic product constant of water and if you just see that this term here so kw is nothing but product of the concentration of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion in water over there this is also called as uh, ionic product constant or ionic product of water so both ways we can use it out there okay now let's move further and see that this kw which is called as ionic product constant of water or ion product constant of water uh, that actually is determined by measurement of electrical conductivity of highly pure distilled water so basically what we do is we try to measure the conductivity from that we determine the value of kw and the value of kw for pure water comes out to be 1.0 into 10 to the minus 14 mole square per decimeter square so that is a commonly taken value there but if you go for uh, more precise values it will be about 1.008 and something like that but for all practical purposes we use the value of kw for water as 1.0 into 10 to the minus 14 mole square decimeter uh, minus 6 so this is coming there because we will come to that that unit for this one <clears throat> but we have to take one important note here that this value is at 298k this is very very important we will try to uh, uh, kind of analyze this aspect of uh, the value of kw and temperature relationship we will take up at a later stage but i am emphasizing here that this is important that this particular value of kw is at 298k okay now so how do we write it now we can just write down the expression kw to be equal to hydronium ion concentration into oh ion concentration and since uh, the hydronium ion concentration and oh ion concentration happen to be equal because any water molecule which picks up a proton from other one so the other one becomes oh minus that means the number of hydronium ions 
and OH ions in given sample of water will be equal. If you do that here, so what you find is the concentration of hydronium ion square will be equal to 1.0 times minus 14. Okay, what does it mean? This means that concentration of hydronium ion in pure water sample will be 1.0 into so minus 7 mole per decimeter cube. So that is the concentration of uh, hydronium ion and same is the concentration of OH ions there. So if we substitute over there, so that we, now you can see it is mole per decimeter cube is the unit for hydronium ion, mole per decimeter cube is the unit for hydroxide ions there. So the product will be equal to mole square decimeter cube minus 6 or that is dec decimeter minus 6. Okay, let's go ahead and see that uh, we can restate this expression as that in pure water and in neutral aqua solutions at 298k. Mind you, everything is important here. Pure water or in neutral aqua solutions and at 298k, the value of hydronium ion concentration and that of OH ion concentration is 1.0 times minus 7. This should be 10 point 10 to minus 7 and not 1.0 minus 7 mole per decimeter cube. Okay, now what happens in case of acids and bases now? Because this is the story so far about the water. That means if you just you just consider water only so far. In case of water, the concentration of hydrogen ion, uh, hydrogen ion or hydronium ion and hydroxide ion happens to be 1.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 mole per decimeter cube. But if I have acidic solution, that means I take pure water, add a few drops of HCl to that. What will happen? HCl is a strong electrolyte. It will ionize completely and generate lot of hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions or hydronium ions, both can be used interchangeably. So what will happen? That means the solution will now have a very large amount of hydronium ions there. Similarly, if I take pure water again to this, I add certain amount of base. Now the concentration of hydroxide ions will be very large. Okay, so that means this concept, like this concept, this this equivalence is only at for pure water. For acids and bases, this equivalent is lost over there. And one more thing we have to take note of it is there that is in any aqua solution, the hydronium ions and OH ions are in equilibrium with water. That means the autoprotonation reaction of water, which we discussed before. That means two water molecules giving you hydronium ions and OH ions. So this equilibrium is always maintained. No matter whether you're talking about a pure water or we're talking about acidic solution or basic solution or any other solution for the matter, which is aqueous. So for all aqueous solutions, this equilibrium between water, hydronium ions and OH ions is maintained. Okay. So that, that is a uh, restatement of the same fact. That is autoprotolysis equilibrium and KW applies to them. That means for any aqua solution, KW will be constant at a given temperature. That is the meaning of this particular statement over there. No matter whether it's an acidic solution or a basic solution or neutral solution, for each one of them, KW will hold together because KW is a characteristic constant for autoprotonation of water. Okay. Let's move further and now talk about what is this pH scale all about. Because we, that is the kind of background we need to have to understand what is the pH scale, then we go further on that. Now, basically, uh, we know that as you have just seen, that is pure water has the concentration of hydronium ion and OH ions to be 1 into 10 to the minus 7 molar. But if you have acids, if you add a drop of acid, the concentration of hydrogen ions will increase. If you go on adding more and more amount of acid, the, the concentration of hydronium ions will go on increasing there. And since KW has to be maintained, the concentration of hydroxide will go on decreasing. We'll talk more about it as we move further. And what you find is in aqua solution, the concentration of hydronium ion and OH ions can vary over a very wide range. Say hydronium ion concentration could be say about 10 to so minus 14 molar to about 10 to so power 1 molar, which is about 15 order of magnitude. That means such a broad range is possible there. And also what happens is since the concentration because normally we deal with dilute solutions when you have dilute solutions the concentration will be about say 10 to the minus 3 10 to the minus 4 or 10 to the minus 3.5 or whatever and if you have got two solutions and the concentration is expressed in terms of maybe 7.32 10 to the minus 4.2 this is a very difficult uh, number to handle so that means the dealing with exponents negative exponent particularly becomes very very inconvenient 
तो दैट इज अ बेसिक पर्पज फॉर विच दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पी एच वॉज गिवन देर बिकॉज सोरेंसन बेसिकली वॉज अ बॉटनिस्ट फ्रॉम डेनिश इट वॉज फ्रॉम डेनिश बॉटनिस्ट एंड he proposed he was handling with solutions which are acidic and basics and all then when he was finding it very inconvenient to talk about uh, the concentration because the negative exponent happens to be little uh, difficult uh, for a common person to handle over there a person with mathematics background can handle it comfortably so he said this is very very difficult so what, how do we uh, go about it he thought of uh, a very practical kind of a scale he proposed what is called as a ph scale which is very practical and now let's now take up what is the definition and logic of ph scale let's look at it definition i'm sure that you all know it what is the definition of ph scale the ph has been defined as the negative logarithm to the base 10 of molar concentration of hydrogen ions in solution that is the way sorensen defined initially but nowadays we talk in terms of hydronium ions because now we know that a hydrogen ion on its own cannot exist in aqueous solutions because the charge density on this uh, species is very large so it picks up a water molecule and becomes hydronium ion there okay so that is the way ph has been defined so we can write it like this ph is equal to negative log to the base 10 of concentration of hydrogen ions or negative log to the base 10 of hydronium ion concentration there so what's important here is that this p basically is an expression for concentration <coughs> so the p letter has been uh, picked up from german language which means potence means power okay so and then p in mathematics in mathematical term what we are expressing here actually means nothing but negative log of negative log to the base 10 of whatever is following after that so okay so ph will be equal to negative log of concentration of hydrogen ions there now and the term in the square bracket here that is whether it is h plus or hydronium ion there so that will be the concentration term and concentration is in terms of molar concentration that's very very important if you use concentration some other terms of concentration then you're not getting ph suppose you express concentration in say in terms of percentage or some other expression there so then we'll not be getting ph so it's very important to know that when you talk about concentration in the context of definition of ph we must say that it uh, concentration happens to be in moles per decimeter cube okay let's move further and now just take a simple example there suppose a given solution has a concentration of hydrogen ion also hydronium ions to be 1.0 in terms of minus 3 molar the ph is very very straightforward now ph will be equal to negative log of the concentration here we substitute it there take log of this that becomes minus 3 multiply by minus 1 that gives me 3 3 is a very simple number to handle now so now we can take up what is the logic of this scale there because it is a very simple thing let's understand basically we had this number here 1 in terms of minus 3 if i take log of this number i get a negative exponent power of 10 the it this gives you simple numbers that means if i take log of 1 into 10 to minus 3 that gives me minus 3 that means this logarithmic number or exponential number uh, the exponential number by taking log becomes a linear number but the problem here is again i got minus 3 suppose there are two solutions one having 10 to minus 4 molar one is having 10 to minus 3 molar which is stronger so there can be confusion because there is negative exponent there so this is definitely better because as against talking about 10 to minus 3 if we just say minus 3 is definitely is a easier uh, uh, easier expression of the concentration of hydronium ion but we can make it even better by multiplying it by minus 1 if i multiply by minus 1 what do i get i put it minus here so it will be minus log 10 of this so that will be equal to 3 so it will be minus 3 will be multiplied by minus 1 that will become 3 so this becomes even better and that is the basic rationale basic logic of this concept because mind you ph is just a matter of convenience basically the problem was how to represent how to express the concentration of hydronium ions or hydroxide ions in aqueous solutions in which actually happen to be in terms of negative exponents of 10 so to make it simpler expression this has been put into uh, this logic that ph is equal to minus log of the concentration over there by taking log 
you become the number becomes linear from exponent and multiply by minus one the number becomes positive so that is a basic simple logic of this concept there let's move further so now we see that for pure water h2 anti 8k we know that hydronium ion concentration happens to be 1 into 10 to the minus 7 molar ph will be equal to 7 very very straightforward simple to calculate there now what does it mean it means that at 298k again i'm emphasizing at 298k water and all neutral aqua solutions would have a ph of 7 that's very very important because whether it's pure water or we have a neutral solution suppose i take a certain concentration of hcl to that i add equal amount of uh, say NaOH the two will neutralize strong acid or strong base solution will be neutral again the pH will be 7 okay and if I've got acidic solution at 298k the concentration of hydrogen ions will be more than this because a lot of hydrogen ions will come from the acid as a consequence the pH will be less than 7 concentration more than 10 to minus 7 pH less than 7 and if in case of basic solutions the hydrogen ion concentration will be much less than 10 to minus 7 as a consequence the pH will be more than 7 it's important to note that that this minus sign in the definition of pH that actually leads to an inverse relationship between pH and the concentration of hydrogen ions there hydrogen ion concentration increases pH decreases Hydrogen ion concentration decreases, pH increases. So that is an inverse relationship between pH. So that is has, has to be kept in mind. That means a solution, uh, say, let's take two solutions there. One solution having a pH of 3, uh, one solution having a pH of 4. Now, which is a stronger acid? That's very tricky. Now, if you look at pH of 3, means we're talking about tensor minus 3 molar. pH of 4 is tensor minus 4 molar. So pH 4 will be lesser acidic than pH 3 that's a meaning of inverse relationship there so there is a negative log in the definition so that makes it inverse relationship between the concentration and the notation for pH the, the, the numerical value of the pH for the system there okay let's move ahead and look at this pH scale there so pH scale as we just said at 298k the pH for neutral neutral aqua solutions of pure water happens to be 7 and to this solution if i add some amount of say NaOH base if i go on adding base so again we have to recall uh, our kw kw is uh, concentration of hydronium ion concentration of oh ion equals to kw and that happens to be constant if the concentration of oh ion increases hydronium ion will decrease and vice versa as a consequence so if the concentration of OH ion is increasing that means the pH uh, concentration of hydrogen ion is decreasing if the concentration of hydrogen ion is decreasing that means the pH is increasing so pH more than 7 will belong to basic solution and as you add more and more of OH ions the concentration of hydrogen ions goes on decreasing more and more as a consequence the value of pH goes on increasing like this so this becomes more and more basic so 14 will be most basic similarly on this side if you add say certain amount of acid so the concentration of acid is increasing acid is increasing hydronium ion is increasing so pH is decreasing if you add more and more amount of uh, acid the concentration uh, the pH will go on decreasing there so solution of say 0 to 1 pH will be highly acidic okay so this is acidic increase here this is a basic increase over there okay now a very very important thing here and that important thing happens to be uh, we have to understand that pH is not a physical property because we know that for any system there are a lot of physical properties you can have a say pressure volume density concentration so they are physical properties characteristic of the system but pH actually is not a physical property by itself this basically is just a manifestation of the concentration which happens to be a physical property there that is what we have is that pH is nothing but a way of representing the concentration of aqua solutions uh, of hydronium ions in aqua solution and this concentration happens to be a physical quantity so this thing has to be kept in mind that pH is just a scale which has been invented or derived or devised 
for convenience only. It is not a physical property of the system there. That's very, very important there. And this picture has been taken from the following source here. Okay, let's move further and now talk about how is, what firstly we will talk about what is PKW and then how is it related to pH now. Now, if you look at, say we define pH to be negative log of hydrogen and hydrogen ion concentration similar to pH because when we talked about pH we said p refers to negative log of so if i just take that we can similar terms we can define two more things over here so if i take p of oh that will be negative log of oh ion concentration or i can have pkw to be negative log of kw and negative log is to the base 10 that has to be kept in mind in ph we always use log to the base 10 we never use the natural log here Okay, now, now we know, we have defined uh, earlier, that is KW is nothing but the ionic product of water. That means the product of ionic, uh, the product of concentration of the two ions which are present in water or in neutral aqua solutions, that is the hydronium ion and OH ion. This concentration product happens to be KW. And then we also know that if I just take log of this term, we find that log of KW, if I take log on both sides, log of KW will be equal to log of hydrogen ion concentration plus log of OH ion concentration because you know that the log of product of two number happens to be sum of the two logs over there. This is a simple thing which I am sure that you know about. Now what we do is we multiply throughout by minus 1. So that becomes minus log of Kw that will be equal to minus log of hydrogen ion concentration minus log of OH ion concentration. And now we can just see that this by definition happens to be nothing but Pkw and this is but our pH and this is our pOH. So we can write the expression pKW to be equal to pH plus pOH. Going further, we also know that at 298K, the value of Kw happens to be 1.0 into 10 to the minus 14. That gives the value of pKW to be 14 and we can write that at 298K, pH plus pOH happens to be 14. We'll talk more about it as we move further. So basically, this is a very, very crucial expression there. That means if I know the pH of any solution, I can find the value of pOH by this expression there. I subtract the pH from the 14, I get the value of pOH and vice versa. If I know the pOH, I can find the pH also. So that is a very, very simple and important relationship we have to keep in mind. Okay, so that is how pH and pKW are related. Let's move further and now talk about what is this pH scale. That means basically when we talk about pH scale, we basically ask for what is the range of pH because that's where a lot of learners have confusion about the range of pH. Some say it is 0 to 14, some say it is 1 to 14 or maybe there is some kind of confusion on this. Let's try to understand uh, what is the range of pH for different kind of, uh, which is the possible range of uh, pH for aqua solutions there. For this, once again, we recall that at 298K, Kw is H3O concentration, that means hydrogen ion concentration into OH ion concentration equal to 1.0 times per. This again is a mistake here, should have been 10 to the power minus 14 mole square decimeter cube. So I think same thing is getting carried over. The hydrogen ion concentration will be nothing but uh, the concentration that is the value of Kw divided by OH minus. So that will be the concentration of hydrogen ion. And if you want to find the concentration of hydroxide ions, that will be a value of Kw divided by that of the hydrogen ion concentration. So this is a mistake in all the three parameters over there. This should be read as 10 into raised to power minus 14. Okay. Now, suppose I have a system. Suppose I have an acid solution wherein the concentration of hydrogen ion happens to be 1 molar. That means I have taken 1 molar hydrochloric acid. So one molar hydrochloric acid will ionize completely to give me one molar hydronium ion. An aqua solution will have about 10 to so minus 7 moles of hydronium ion from water, which is insignificant. So for all practical purposes, the concentration of hydronium ions will be one molar. If it is one molar, the pH will be zero. That's what it is. Now, if we take a situation wherein the concentration of OH ions happens to be say one molar, so that gives me concentration of hydronium ion to be equal to 1.0 times power minus 14. This error is uh, kind of propagating because it's just we have made one equation and copying and pasting it a number of times. So this error is percolating through and through. 
but please bear with it that this happens to be 10 to the power minus 14 there okay so the concentration of hydronium ion in a solution which is a one molar NaOH will be 10 to the power minus 14 so that will give you a pH of 14 there what does it, that means basically we can say well, practically speaking the range happens to be from 0 to 14 because that is a t common solutions because even they are uh, concentrated solutions we don't use such solutions in uh, normal day-to-day -day activities in chemistry lab so solutions normally are used are much dilute than this but these are the normal possibilities which can we can come across so the pH will be say around from 0 to 14 we'll talk more about it as we move further okay now question comes is can the pH be more than 14 or less than 0 at 298k let's try to answer this question answer to this question is theoretically speaking yes pH can be more than 14 or less than 0 but practically speaking the answer is no it cannot be less than 0 that means it is not observed to be less than 0 and it is not observed to be more than 14 let's try to understand why of it theoretically speaking it is yes let's understand that first now suppose I have got 10 molar solution of hydrochloric acid again because we know that the concentration uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid is about 11.6 molar I dilute it a little make it about 10 molar so if the concentration of hydrochloric acid is 10 molar the concentration of hydronium ions in the solution will be 10 molar and that will give me a pH of minus log 10 and log of 10 happens to be 1 so minus of 1 happens to be minus 1 pH will be minus 1 that means in principle theoretically speaking as per the definition of pH if I take uh, 10 molar HCl solution the pH will come out to be minus 1 should be minus 1 as per the definition similarly if I take say 10 molar NaOH hypothetically if I take 10 molar NaOH what will be the concentration of hydronium ions again I will find out there this will come out to be again same mistake is carrying forward so it will be 10 to the power minus 15 mole per decimeter cube if I do this and again try to find out the value of pH will come out to be 15 that means theoretically pH can be less than 0 that means it can be negative or can be more than 14 it can be 15 also if you have 10 molar OH concentration definitely pH will be 15 but, but the answer to this is as I mentioned earlier also practically it is not possible there it is not clean uh, it is not observed to be so what basically happens is at because this definition of pH we have the way we have been uh, started with that that is the way uh, it was defined initially by Sorensen that is pH is negative log of hydronium ion concentration or hydrogen ion concentration that actually is valid only for dilute solutions this is something which we don't uh, normally take note of that is this definition is only for dilute solutions at higher concentrations what happens is the activity of hydronium ion is not equal to the concentration so I'm using a new term here activity we'll try to clarify it here if you really ask me a true definition or you can say a thermodynamic definition of pH will be something like this will be pH is equal to negative log to the base 10 of activity of hydronium ions there now the question comes is what is this activity let's try to understand what is the meaning of activity of hydronium ions or activity in general first activity is nothing but effective concentration or availability that's a way it has been uh, uh, talked about let's understand what's the meaning of effective concentration and what is the meaning of avail effective concentration or availability are equivalent terms over there for this what we do is we take let's take an example this suppose this is assume it to be uh, a snapshot of a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid the red uh, spheres here are representing hydrogen ions there and the black ones here are the chloride ions there I have taken a little amount of hydrochloric acid in water solution is fairly dilute there now if I introduce a kind of an electrode a glass electrode to measure the hydrogen ion concentration so what will happen since the solution is fairly dilute all hydrogen ions can reach the electrode and get registered or get counted over there so, so how many are there 5 and 4 there are 9 hydrogen ions there so all 9 will be counted there so this is a dilute solution the activity activity basically is 
how many ions are available to be counted, available to be uh, sensed by the electrode. All are available there. There are nine. Uh, in this particular example, there are nine hydrogen ions, and all nines are available. They can just comfortably move to the electrode and get registered over there. So the activity basically refers to how many ions can be sensed, judged, or uh, kind of counted over there. So act activity happens to be same as concentration. The concentration is nine. There are nine hydrogen ions, and all nine are available for registration or getting counted onto the electron there, electrode over there. Let's take a second case now. I take a slightly concentrated solution, or rather more concentrated solution there. Now there are many more ions there. Hydrogen ions are also more. There are chloride ions are also more. Again, I do the same thing, and I put the electrode there to make the measurement of pH. I find that most of the ions can reach this, but there will be certain positions. I just can take a kind of created uh, a schematic kind of representation. What you find is that this particular hydrogen ion is surrounded by lot of chloride ions over there. It may so happen that this ion is not able to reach the electrode and get counted. So that means this ion is present in solution, but it is not able to reach the electrode. Though there are random motions, but I'm just giving is just a, an example over there because if you have a concentrated solution, the things are very very complicated. Because I can't make that kind of a solution here, but this just to give you an idea about what is possibility. There is a possibility. This is only one I've shown over there. There can be many hydrogen ions. In the solution, which will be surrounded by a lot of other ions, the counter ions, that is chloride ions in this case, and will not be able to reach to the electrode. Because and then since the concentration is fairly large, the movement also will be lesser. There will be a lot of uh, uh, inconvenience to reach to the electrode over there. So, so in this case, so the two, four, six, and four, ten, and then three, thirteen. So there are thirteen hydrogen ions, and out thirteen, let's say twelve are able to reach to the electrode there. So. The concentration is 13. Availability is 12. So this 12 happens to be the activity, and 13 is the concentration. So at higher concentration, we find the activity is not equal to concentration. So th that is the meaning of this concept of activity, uh, which basically is nothing but effective concentration. And typically speaking, activity is nothing but a concentration multiplied by a Factor there, a fraction over there. Say, suppose the activity coefficient happens to be say 0.9. Let's say here the concentration happens to be 0 0.01, activity will be 0 0.01. Here the concentration happens to be one, and activity coefficient happens to be say 0.9. Though effective the activity will be 0.9 into one, that will be 0.9. Okay, so the concentration is one molar here, but it's what the activity is 0.9 molar. Just to give you random examples over there. Okay, now. Uh, we can even try to understand uh, this concept of activity in slightly different way. Let's imagine that there is a class. Okay, there is a classroom situation there, and a teacher is teaching, and there are about 40 students there. A teacher has taken attendance; all 40 are present. Okay, so if I ask you, what is the number of students in the class? 40. That's a concentration. Okay, and. Uh, Let's assume that the, when the teacher is teaching, say about uh, say six or say seven, seven students uh, are physically present there, but mentally they are preoccupied elsewhere. Maybe someone has some other issue in mind. He is sitting in the class, he or she is sitting in the class, but is not attending to the teacher there. So in terms of class, so that the students say seven of them. Maybe some has some engagement after the class. One is just waiting when the class gets over, so his mind is preoccupied in that. Or maybe someone has a problem at home, or someone is sick, someone is not feeling well. There could be any possibility. So if we say that seven students out of forty are not mentally present, men mentally participating in the class, then effectively the concentration total happens to be forty. The students are forty there, but only thirty-three are participating in the class. So this 33 happens to be the availability for the learners in the class. So that is the activity. Concentration happens to be 40. So that is the way we can relate concentration and activity. Activity will be less than the concentration, and that happens at higher concentration in case of solutions there. Okay. Now let's get back. Okay. Let's get back to uh, the relationship between pH 
and temperature. So basically to understand uh, what's the relationship between temperature and pH, we need to recall our autoprotonation of water. Because we remember that this reaction happens to be an equilibrium reaction, wherein two water molecules gives you a hydronium ion and OH ion gun. Now, now, since it is an equilibrium reaction, so this is characterized by an equilibrium constant that we learned earlier. And we also know that all equilibrium constants depend on temperature. In this case, at higher temperature, there will be more ionization. That means the concentration of hydronium ions and OH ions will be more at higher temperature and less at lesser temperature. And what is found is that uh, the, this equilibrium constant for this reaction happens to be uh, dependent on the temperature. And we also have seen that this equilibrium constant we could reorganize in terms of Kw because the concentration of hydrogen ion, uh, the concentration of water happened to be constant in such a system. So since Kw depends on temperature, so let's see what is the meaning of this one. What you find is that at different temperatures, this is the value of Kw given there. So at 298K, it is the value what we talked about so far earlier. So at lower temperature, say 0 degree centigrade, it is much less there. At higher temperature, it becomes more and more. So that is what happens in case of uh, higher temperature for aqueous solutions there. Let's take the example of say 323K, uh, that is 50 degree centigrade. What you find is that at 323K, the concentration of hydronium ions in water would be about 2.34 in terms of minus 7. This value comes from the value of Kw. And from this, we can work out the pH to be equal to 6.63. What does it mean? This means that the pH of water or of neutral aqueous solutions at 323K would be 6.63. That means now our scale changes. The scale is not from 7 onwards. 7 is not neutral now. Neutral happens to be 6.63. Anything more than this will be basic. Less than this will be acidic there. That means if we have a solution of pH 7 at 50 degrees centigrade, it would be basic there. That's very important. That's why it is important to mention the temperature while giving the pH value of a given solution. If you say pH of 7, we must tell at what temperature. If it is say at 25 degree centigrade, it's fine, it's neutral. If it is 50 degree centigrade, it is acidic, sorry, it is basic. So it happens to be at still higher temperature, say 100 degree centigrade, boiling water. It will be even more basic over there. Okay, so that is very important to mention the pH of this one. Okay, now, now uh, let's try to sum up what we've done today. What basically we've done today is we started by introducing uh, the concept of Kw, ionic product of water, because we didn't come to pH straight away. We talked about uh, that in case of water, there is an autoprotonation reaction taking place, and that autoprotonation equilibrium is characterized by an equilibrium constant, and which we rearranged. Uh, and work out, worked out the concept or the term Kw. Kw happens to be the ionic product constant of water there. Having introduced that, thereafter we came down to uh, the concept of pH, wherein we talked about why did we need to talk about, why did we need to have a concept like a pH, and then we also defined what it is, and then talked about the logic behind this concept of pH there. Thereafter, uh, we related pH and pKw. pKw was a term which was uh, actually, which is nothing but negative log of Kw. So having related the two together, thereafter we moved on to uh, talking about what exactly is the range of pH. That is, we, we clarified that pH normally is from 0 to 14, but it can as well be less than 0 or more than 14. But we told that practically it is not possible there and that also we justified in terms of uh, the concept of activity because at higher because this this definition of pH as negative log of hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium ion concentration is valid only for dilute solutions. At concentrations concentrated solutions we have to bring in the concept of activity if activity happens to be nothing but effective concentration or availability so that is the way it is put there. So we clarified this concept over there with suitable examples there. And towards the end, we talked about the concept uh, that is a relationship between temperature and pH. And we made it a point to ensure uh, that we must tell the temperature while talking about the pH. Because when you mention a pH, pH of 7 
is neutral only at 298k for higher temperature say at we take the example of say at 50 degrees centigrade so 6.63 will be neutral ph anything more than 6.63 will be basic and so on and so forth i think that uh, what we wanted to do today and the next session we will talk about how do we calculate ph of different kind of solutions say if you got strong acid a strong base how do you calculate the ph then we move on to the weak acids and weak bases and things like that thank you very much